Welcome to the Glenbeck program. This week may be the most important uh, of my broadcast career. We are going to uncover the truth that has been hidden in plain sight for many, many years. Come over here. Get everybody you know to watch the program this week, because this week we're going to talk about the puppet master. I want you to watch with an open mind this week, because what people like George Soros are counting on is that you dismiss things out of hand. This is a guy who is fighting for keeps. He says that he is willing to die for his causes. These abnormal times, these abnormal times mean the ends justify the means, every legal means possible. This week, we are going to be pulling back the curtain and expose the puppet master, his hands and the stage, the script that they are working off, what they want so badly so badly what they're working on so badly they want it that they are willing to die for it don't miss a single episode this week america hello by the way um i want to talk to you a little bit and kind of give you a little preview and a prelude of what is happening this week if you're a longtime fan of this program, you know what happens when you Facebook post or tweet a positive or a defense of me or something that we talk about on this program. Try it if you haven't done it before. Oh, you are in for a treat. The floodgates of progressive hell open up on you. And there is a seemingly, seemingly endless barrage of comments that pour in from people from all over the world, strangely enough. And they are all the left of the left. Many of them are, are paid and, uh, and fully purchased by the Soros regime. Most of the comments that you'll get back won't be directed at me. They will be directed at you. You will be demonized for defending or even being stupid enough to buy anything on this program. I've asked you before and I'll ask you again. This week especially, do not believe anything that I tell you because I tell it to you. Make sure you do your own homework. If this is the first time seeing this program, well, I think you're in for an eye-opener, too, because you've heard me described as a, a guy who's just full of hate, a racist, a conspiracy theorist, just trying to get people to blow stuff up or create another Oklahoma City. That's the latest from the Soros clan. Well, if that were true, then America just isn't the place that I thought it was, and most likely not the place you thought it was. I mean, a racist, hate-filled host who is openly trying to get people to be violent would have zero viewers in the America that I know and love. As it turns out, we are the most successful cable news program in this time slot of all time. So what is it that we're doing and doing right? Well, there's a few things, and you will see them demonstrated this week. We don't treat you like an infant. We don't treat you like you're a fool. We speak plainly to you and openly to you, whether you like it or not. We, we also say the things that others may be thinking, but we verify them and we get it right. I know the critics will say this show only gets ratings because I'm an entertainer. Yeah, I like pie. I love this one. I'm an entertainer, right? I can't tell you how many times. Oh, you've seen the ins and the outs of... QE1 and QE2 on Entertainment Tonight. Sure, I mean, practically TMZ when we stoop to the low-hanging fruit of Von Hayek's Road to Serfdom. <laughs> we don't get rank, uh, ratings because we are dangling, uh, you know, scantily clad ratings fruit. We get ratings because most of the time we're right. And in the rare event where we do make a mistake, we'll correct it. Unlike the New York Times, we'll lead with our corrections instead of burying them on some back page. After the massive stock plunge in 08, I warned about the economy not being out of the woods. I told you that they were lying to us. Meanwhile, every single economist said, we're A-OK, -okay. we're on the road to recovery. I distinctly remember being called crazy for saying that we are going to slide into the, uh, and slam into the side of the mountain, that we are on the brink of depression, and it's only a matter of time. Well, when I said that, all the comedy shows had a field day calling me a doomsday sayer, etc., etc. Yeah, I mean, nothing, not a lot has changed. Who's the crazy one? 
Now, global economic collapse is practically Main Street, uh, Main Street and mainstream terminology. Look at this headlines. This one was from Reuters yesterday. China, you know those crazy people over in China. China newspaper warns of disaster over Fed move and even global economic collapse. Global economic collapse? Where have I heard that one before? I'm telling you all these things for a reason. Because I need you to understand that things are approaching and they are approaching the things we told you about in the past are approaching and they're approaching quickly. All the negative stories about Glenn Beck and gold is another one that people started to do. I started, I personally started buying gold, um, I think it was about $400 an ounce, between three and $400 an ounce. I think I picked up one of my clients uh, at about $700 an ounce and started telling people on my radio program to buy gold for an advertisement. Do you know how many times I've been called crazy and how I was bilking stupid people out of their money? Do you know that gold hit a record high today of $1,400 an ounce? Um, gosh, that means you would have doubled your money. And I didn't even ever say, buy it as an investment. I have no idea what gold's going to do. It's volatile. It could crash tomorrow. I've said, buy it as an insurance policy. Why? Because they're going to monetize our debt. Ooh. Ooh, wait a minute. That's exactly what they're doing. And yet I was called crazy when I said they were going to do that. If you're somebody who is tuning in today, I challenge you to watch the show for a few weeks. You make the decision on your own about me. Don't take it from a George Soros paid for and, and wholly owned blog site. Four or five years ago, Condoleezza Rice said something that stuck with me at the time. In fact, I think I was over at uh, CNN and I, I did a show about this really bothers me. She talked about how the world was going through birth pangs. Birth pangs. And I remember saying, wow, well, that's odd. I mean, biblical. Well, that's odd. Why birth pangs? Well, birth pangs imply something. And I mean, if you've ever had a baby, I haven't. But I've watched my wife come out of her skin having one. It implies that something is coming. And birth pangs, they start small. And then they get farther and farther apart. Uh, or, sorry, and they're farther apart. And then they get closer and closer together. And they get stronger and stronger. And in the end, there's an event, an arrival of something. Now, depending on your point of view, that arrival could be a cute, cuddly little baby. Or it could be, what if you have kids in the room, tell them to look away. Or it could be something a little more like this scene from Alien. Uh-oh. Oh, yes. Gross-looking alien. Mmm. Just remember, oh, don't open the mouth. Don't open the mouth. Don't open the mouth. Ah! Uh, this cute little... Uh, cuddly baby is actually cute and cuddly to somebody. Somebody's mom is going, Lord, uh, with a silver mouth. <laughs> Not me. Cute, cuddly babies are gross to others. I want to warn you that birth pangs are coming stronger and stronger and closer and closer together. And it is important that we notice them because it telegraphs how close we are to an event, to birth. But it doesn't answer this question. The event. What is the event? What is it we're giving birth to? And what is the date of birth? These will be filled out. This one, I think, is going to be filled out this week on this program. But here's your birth bangs. Eh, maybe tarp. We waited a while. These are coming. These are coming. Here's the first birth pang that I think we're about to see. Violence, pressure from below. Why do you think that the left spent so much time and energy trying to paint the tea parties as violent? We showed you the videos where NBC would be shaking in fear over the possible, possible coming violence from the tea parties. And, you know, every time we'd show it to you, it'd always be a picture of something like this, you know. Ah! People, you know, the mom with a double stroller or grandma sitting there in a fold-up lawn chair, and the script didn't match up, but boy, oh boy, they had to have violence. Meanwhile, while they were saying that these people were violent, I was telling you this. Watch. The one thing you cannot do is play into their hands. They need you to be angry. They need you to, they need you to be racist. They need you to uh, push back. They need you to grab a gun. They need you to get angry. Don't do it.
Okay. I wasn't telling you that for that time. I don't think you're violent. I know who they are. They're agitators. The far left needs the violence. This is the strategy of the radical leftists. They create chaos. They put pressure from below. And then they have the, the government. They're all infiltrated here in the government. Pressure down below. And it causes them, the government, who they're in league with, can swoop in and fix the problem to save you. It's a strategy that by Wednesday, you will understand in breathtaking clarity. Breathtaking taking clarity. You do not want to miss an episode of this program this week, and I, I implore you. But can you put the clock up here? I wanted to put a clock up here. This is, we start this tomorrow on George Soros, and let me tell you something, and I mean this sincerely, and I will show you the evidence later on in the program. Once we tell you what's coming, once we reveal these people, we could be speeding up the clock for the event. And I will show it to you in their own words later on in this broadcast today. So, why does the left need this violence? Well, listen to a clip from a Democratic pollster, Mark Penn, happened just the other day, and yet no one pays attention to it. How can the left win the country? Watch. Cabinets don't, don't really sell things. The president himself has to reconnect with the people. Remember, President Clinton reconnected through Oklahoma, yeah. right? And the president right because now, he seems removed. And it wasn't until that speech that he re-clicked with the American public. Obama needs a similar, a similar kind of You think of words will work for... Obama needs a similar kind of event. Oh, well, like Oklahoma City. If only Barack Obama could have the opportunity to speak to America after another Oklahoma City type event, then he'll politically be in good shape. Wow. Now, according to Drummond Pike, the founder of Tides, who, Drummond, I hope you watch this week because, oh, it's all coming undone this week. I will be the guy who causes the next Oklahoma City. This is in a letter, an appeal to advertisers uh, of Fox, dear Fox advertisers, read this part of it. No one, left, right, center, wants to see another Oklahoma City. The next assassin may succeed. If so, there will be blood on many hands. They are setting up another Oklahoma City. They are claiming that one is coming, and they've already marked the one who caused it. But don't you miss Wednesday's show? When I show you violence and the pressure from below, it will boggle your mind. Mark, I tell you, as a pollster, that sounds like a great idea. You know, what's a few hundred men, women, and children when you could win back the House in 2012? I mean, wouldn't that be great? After all, the ends justify the means, as Saul Alinsky said. There was a story out this weekend about 828 and how I wore a bulletproof vest. These guys are quick on the draw, aren't they? The reports were, gee, I thought Tea Party people were peaceful. How come Glenn Beck had to wear a bulletproof vest? Really? I'm not afraid of my own crowd, uh, genius. Remember the Panthers saying they were going to show up? Besides, my crowd knows that I'm far too doughy for bullets to be effective. Okay, now here's the next pain. Here's this one. This one, I fear, is coming from the left. The second one, the radicals reveal themselves. They'll become unafraid. I told you this, and I believe I set this up with something along the lines of, look out, because we'll be in trouble when the mask starts to come off. I told you about a year ago that as it would come unraveled, the radicals would start revealing themselves. Watch. I think these people are close. I think they're dying to tell us what the real agenda is. I think they're close to taking the mask off. Okay, got it? Newsweek jumped the gun, a gun on this sentiment when they declared, we're all socialists now. Most people just dismiss this as a misread of the American people. I think it was the arrogance of the elitist media myself. That's why Newsweek, you know, sold for a dollar. But we are seeing now the masks come off more and more every day. Here is a story that I haven't seen anybody comment on. MSNBC actually suspended Keith Olbermann because he donated money to the Democratic candidates without telling his boss first. Oh, they must have been upset. I mean, somebody could have found out which political side of the spectrum he was on. <laughs> I didn't see that one coming. Oh, yeah, he's just like the late, great Tim Russert. You just can't tell with Keith Olbermann. 